A paper delivered at the Hydrozoan Society's second conference was so groundbreaking that the audience members couldn't believe it was genuine. A well-known marine biologist who attended said the paper's discovery was utterly improbable. It was a wholly unintentional observation. Two lab students discovered a hydrozoan specimen in the late 1980s that they thought was a Turritopsis nutricula, a tiny jellyfish less than a centimeter long. Those they gathered were adult medusa that had not reached sexual maturity, thus were unable to discharge eggs or sperm. They put the samples in a tank to breed them for research and promptly forgot about them. They anticipated finding sexually mature adults when they came back. Instead, scientists discovered fewer adult medusa than they did in the beginning, and many babies in the form of newly established polyps on the tank bottom. Had these jellyfish multiplied so rapidly? What would have happened to all the adults if they had? The researchers began to observe the jellyfish in the tank to find out closely, and what they discovered astonished them. To produce more young polyps, the adult medusa were not reproducing and spawning. They were entirely reversing the aging process by returning to their youthful state. Turritopsis dornii, a distinct jellyfish that they determined is capable of Benjamin buttoning itself repeatedly, was what they had gathered instead of Turritopsis nutricula. As a result, scientists understood they had uncovered something unimaginable in death. The media went wild over this news in a society preoccupied with aging and mortality. What is the key to perpetual youth revealed by this tiny jellyfish? Can something truly live forever? If it does, how might we be able to use this age-defying secret for our benefit? It's helpful to consider Turritopsis dornai's typical lifespan to comprehend how it accomplishes this remarkable achievement. The eternal jellyfish is a hydrozoan that spends most of its life underwater, including its hydroid stage, and is not a true jellyfish. However, for this discussion, we will use the term jellyfish to describe it. The life cycle of this jellyfish begins when adult jellyfish swarm and release millions of eggs and sperm in their distinctive medusa form. Most jellyfish species will congregate in swarms of hundreds or even thousands to reproduce. Within a day or two after sperm successfully fertilizes an egg, the fertilized egg develops into a planula, a tiny floating lava. A firm surface such as the sea floor, a rock, or coral will cause the planula to adhere. When they get trapped, they go on to the next stage. The protected planula begins to ascend from its perch and develop into a polyp. This has a tall stalk with a bulbous head that now has a mouth and long waving fingers. It somewhat resembles a plant. The polyp consumes food by sucking it into its mouth and grabbing it with its tentacles. The polyps function like a factory, producing a stack of virtually jellyfish-like clones. When the oldest clone is prepared, it gets freed and floats away into the ocean as an ephora, a tiny jellyfish. Now that it is on its own in the sea, all is required of most jellyfish is for it to continue to eat, grow, and finally transform into the medusa with which we are all familiar. They continue swimming, feeding, and spawning as medusa until they perish. However, Turritopsis dornai offers a clever workaround for the minor drawback of death. This little jellyfish can return all its cells to a younger condition when under extreme stress, famine, or physical harm. The medusa transforms into a cyst, a blobby substance that settles onto the ocean floor and resembles its former state, while the jellyfish contracts and retracts its tentacles. Three days later, the blobby cyst begins to develop into polyps, and the cycle repeats itself. It can be completed from beginning to end in about a week. It resembles a butterfly reverting into its caterpillar form. Moreover, the caterpillar could eventually split into several butterflies. Although this beautiful process has only ever been observed in the lab and not in the wild, there is no reason to believe it isn't taking place all over our oceans. So what is happening? How does a jellyfish convert from an adult to a child? through a procedure known as cellular transdifferentiation. 
the immortal jellyfish can perform this great rejuvenation. This occurs when a cell of one kind instantly transforms into a cell of a completely different type without first changing into a neutral intermediate form. According to research, the Medusa does not appear to possess stem cells, a variety of cells that can differentiate into any other form of enclosure. Therefore, it must be true that its current cells are put to new uses. According to research, the cells in the top layer of the Medusa's dome and the canal system, the jellyfish's digestive system, are most likely to differentiate into new cell types. Of course, a Medusa's crown is made up of different cells than a polyp is, and vice versa. They play various roles that are suited to multiple purposes. The immortal jellyfish can transdifferentiate these specialized Medusa cells into polyp cells. This development's reversal contradicts conventional wisdom regarding aging in the animal realm. Long-held theories hold that once an animal reaches sexual maturity, there is no turning back, and that cells continue to function as they always have until they die of senescence. However, the immortal jelly can change cells at any stage of their lifespan back to their original state, whether a young Medusa or an older adult come close to passing away. A little shock is all that's required. A pinch with tweezers was all it took for them to revert in the initial trials to demonstrate this phenomenon. The precise mechanism employed by Turritopsis dorni is currently unknown, however, researchers have taken a closer look at the cells of the immortal jellyfish's cyst form. They also discovered intriguing variations from its polyp condition that may help us understand how the immortal jellyfish prepares for its new life. Turritopsis dorni, in its cyst form, expends a significant amount of energy on internal maintenance, particularly caring for its DNA. It appears that the jellyfish can safeguard and maintain its telomeres. DNA strands called telomeres can be discovered at the ends of chromosomes. They shield the rest of our DNA from harm, particularly during cell replication, like the plastic parts on our shoelaces. A small amount of DNA from the telomeres is lost each time a cell divides, because they are lengthy. A lot must be lost before any crucial DNA is impacted. But with time, telomeres gradually break down to nothing, making DNA more vulnerable to damage. This results in cell death, and ultimately, an organism dies. As it is known, telomere shortening is one of the main aspects of aging, but there appears to be a disproportionately high gene expression that supports telomerase, an enzyme that repairs telomeres, in Turritopsis dorni cysts. By merely lengthening the telomeres and safeguarding the jellyfish's DNA, the immortal jellyfish may be able to prevent the cells from naturally aging. Additionally, the jellyfish makes a small effort to replicate or differentiate its cells during the cyst stage which makes sense given that it is actively attempting to prevent cells from specializing. The cysts also don't react to outside stimuli, ensuring their energy is directed towards DNA maintenance and repair until the polyp is prepared to regenerate. Turritopsis dorni, which is quickly enroaching on the world's oceans, has benefited from this. Thought to have hitchhiked on boats and originally from the Mediterranean, they are now widespread. They have presumably been able to live over great distances and in a variety of habitats, thanks in part to their resilience. According to research, one Turritopsis dorni can reproduce 10 times in the lab, at intervals as little as one month. In the wild, this may continue in an endless circle of back and backward trans-differentiations for much longer, possibly forever. We are unlikely to be able to recreate Benjamin Button ourselves. However, there are specific lessons we can take away from this jellyfish that will help us fend off some of the illnesses that will afflict us later in life. Transdifferentiation is a fascinating area for researchers since it could lead us to the development of remedies for conditions like Parkinson's disease, because it allows cells to change into one another in little to no steps and quickly. 
Imagine replacing lost or injured brain cells with skin cells that may be transformed into neurons. We might be able to figure out how to accomplish this ourselves if we can figure out how the immortal jellyfish achieves it. MicroRNAs, short generic strands that control human DNA, are a different area that the immortal jellyfish may illuminate. They participate in DNA repair and can turn genes on and off. We are aware that Turritopsis dornai is undergoing extensive DNA repair, and learning more about how microRNAs control DNA repair in tiny jellies may enable us to apply the same principles to our cells. Despite having relatively comparable DNA given how dissimilar we are from one another, humans and jellyfish nonetheless separated from one another long ago on the tree of life. As a result, some genes in jellyfish aren't expressed in humans, and vice versa. As a result, there can be certain restrictions on what is applicable. Even though Turritopsis dornai was initially identified in 1883, it wasn't until the 1980s that we learned that it might be immortal. We now know that there may be other immortal organisms in the universe. The natural world which includes giant and small species, including jellies, trees, microorganisms and fungi, probably contains solutions beyond our imagination. However, as we learn more about biodiversity and our scientific knowledge advances, we will learn more, which could open new therapy options for cancer and degenerative diseases. Even while the immortal jellyfish might not be able to extend our lives indefinitely, it may help. It's critical to feed our minds as we live longer lives constantly. So, what's your take on this? Would you want to have some jellyfish in your DNA? Let me know down in the comments below and check out one of these other videos. This has been Mr. Singularity, and I'll see you on the next one.